Hello and welcome to The Broken Sword, your YouTube home for The Lord of the Rings and all things J.R.R. Tolkien. In today's video we look at the possibility of a Sauron and Smaug alliance. As far as we know, Smaug was the last of the great fire drakes of Middle-earth, or at least he was the greatest at that time. What we know about dragons and balrogs gives us an impression that they are creatures of strong personal will and determination, and it is possible that Sauron wouldn't be able to coerce or corrupt Smaug in the same way he was able to corrupt and coerce orcs, or the different peoples who had joined him in doing battle against the west. And for the purposes of this video, the west represents all those lands west of Mordor, such as obviously Gondor, Arnor, Lindon, Rivendell, and yes, the Shire as well. But in this video we will try to find out what might have been had the two interacted and decided to join their powers. With us looking at two of Tolkien's most formidable villains, the last great wind dragon Smaug, and the dark lord of the second and third ages of Middle Earth himself, Sauron, this is definitely a video of power. We have discussed in the past the likes of Balrogs, and how they were the same order as Sauron being one of the Maya, and how that, despite Sauron being the strongest of the Maya, he was not able to really dominate the Balrogs, meaning it wasn't necessarily feasible for him to be able to dominate the dragons as well. Sauron does not have that much experience with dragons personally, they were more his master's creation and his master's beasts, so it is not just cut and dry that he could do the same. As for Smaug, at the time of Smaug's lifetime, Sauron was not ready to openly declare himself, instead he was hiding out in Dol Guldur under the guise of the Necromancer. So it is a matter of time for one, as the Lord of the Rings takes place some 60 years after the conclusion of The Hobbit. By the time Sauron was ready to declare himself open and begin to make a move on the free peoples of Middle Earth. By this point, Smaug had already been waylaid by that unexpected party, as we see in the culmination of The Hobbit and the death of Smaug by way of Bard the Bowman. If they had joined together though, it would have given Sauron a defence against the likes of the Great Eagles, better than the foul beasts could do, which might have done him some good in his attempts to rescue the ring and put it back upon his finger. An important note that we get in The Lord of the Rings is that when Gollum is captured and tortured by Sauron, he claims the Dark Lord has but nine fingers, which leads us to conclude that his form has remained the same since the time the ring was cut from his finger by Isildur. So while Sauron is still immensely powerful during the War of the Ring, he is a bit past his prime when it comes to his time as Dark Lord. But we do cover that kind of topic in a lot more detail on what was Sauron actually doing during the War of the Ring video, so please check that out if you wish. But anyway, throughout the war he is trying to regain his full strength, which he is never quite able to do. It could be this diminishment of his former powers that would make him doubt his ability to control Smaug, or it might be that he was unaware of Smaug since he was at the time hiding from the White Council and a shadow of himself at the time that the White Council did in fact drive him out of Dol Guldur. Although I will admit, the chances of him not hearing about a dragon coming and sacking Erebor is near on impossible in my opinion, so I don't hold this idea with too much weight. There is another problem though, one that might have been proven more detrimental to such an alliance. Sauron and Smaug are both, clearly, dominant personalities. Two dominant personalities cannot share in power, as one will always seek to establish their control over the other. The father of dragons, Glaurung, was able to hypnotise his victims, doing more with his sorcery than ever with his fire. Glaurung's ability to drive his foes to madness and control them is highly like that of what Sauron would later become famous for. It is difficult to imagine these two characters working together, and of the beasts remaining in Middle Earth, if there is one that is capable of resisting the will and corrosive influence of Sauron, it just might be the dragon whether they are the great worm types like that of Glaurung, or more like the fire drakes like that of Smaug. It is perhaps in these great beasts that Sauron might meet his match, at least in the contest of will at the level of power he has at this 
time. This is obviously all speculation though. The most likely answer is that at the time of writing The Hobbit, Professor Tolkien had not yet considered or fleshed out what would become the story that we now know as The Lord of the Rings. For one thing, we have examples like Samwise Gamgee was not even in the first draft of that book. Or another bit of information we have learned since Tolkien's death is that he originally intended to focus the story on Tom Bombadil when it came to write a sequel to The Hobbit. As well as this too, the biggest example is of Tolkien changing the importance of a certain golden ring that Bilbo wins in his Battle of Riddles. Once nothing more than a lovely piece of treasure, later far more important to the entire story of Middle Earth than maybe anything else. It shows that just because it was so in The Hobbit, that does not mean it can give us all the answers in the end. And also just to add a quick point here as well for this discussion, and that is one of the Necromancer. If we consider Sauron in The Hobbit for just a moment, what is he hiding as? The Necromancer. And what can Necromancers tend to do? Resurrect or reanimate the dead? Well, could Sauron have done this to Smaug? Although Sauron was in the guise of the Necromancer, he could not in fact resurrect the dead. We have no guidance from the text on that to be true at all. Or even if somehow he could perhaps do something in some form like it, whatever it would have taken to actually do this to a dead dragon would have been something far beyond his ability, with there being no hint of him doing it on even a small scale, to think that he could possibly do this to something the size of Smaug, I think is something we can safely just roll out. How could this have all actually played out though? Well, for someone as powerful as Smaug at the time he was still alive, there were only two real options to have them meet. Sauron to go and risk revealing his identity as the necromancer and go meet Smaug himself, or send someone as a representative like the Witch King on his behalf. I believe he would at least initially send the Witch King to bargain with the dragon. Now, Smaug would have no initial interest in joining in my opinion. He had his caves, he had his treasure, he had peace. It would take a lot for him to bother consider leaving. However, that is just what Sauron can offer him. A lot. Almost everything. Whatever jewels, whatever gold, whatever treasures he may want would be Smaug's. Now, whether Sauron would truly intend to give him those is one thing, but he would definitely offer it with both hands to try and get him on side. Now I'm not saying he would say yes on the spot, there is no reason for him to be so quick to act, so he takes his time, and so the Witch King leaves and returns two more times, just like the messenger would do to Dane in later years. And both these times he would bring more extravagant gifts, give him just a little teaser of the kind of things Sauron could offer him, and this turns Smaug's head. In the end, Sauron would know just how to play to the greed of the dragon, and at the end of the day, Smaug was far smaller than the great dragons of the past, so Sauron would in a way have full confidence he would accept. And he does. When the war is over, Smaug can have choice of any northern lands and kingdoms that he wishes to have. All he must do is come fight with Sauron. And if they were to team up, that could swing many battles a different way in the War of the Rings. But I'm not going to go too much into a what if scenario today, this video is more just looking at the idea of what could potentially cause Sauron and Smaug to team up. But if you would like us to do another video looking at a true what if scenario if Sauron and Smaug had teamed up and how it would affect all later events and battles, then please leave me a comment of what if Sauron and Smaug in the comment section below, and I will happily get working on that for you. I very much enjoyed doing the Balrog What If recently, so this would be a great one to work on as well. So there we have it, a look at the idea of Sauron and Smaug forming an alliance. They are both extremely powerful creatures who do not wish to serve others, but I believe at the end of it all, Sauron can offer Smaug treasures he could never say no to as a dragon. They may not ever fully trust each other, but I fully believe they could put it to the side to get to their great ends. Sauron would be willing to offer him anything at all, with the knowledge of how important he could be for all future battles. I mean, just imagine Smaug swooping down at Minas Tirith as well as everything else. 
attacking the ship sailing down the river, breaking the charge of the Rohirrim from great heights with waves of fire, things may well have gone drastically different. I do not think Smaug would ever have fully trusted Sauron though. I believe he would have just seen it as a guaranteed victory in his own arrogance, and so wanted to team with the winning side at the end of all things. Either way though, Sauron would have wanted to take Smaug out of Erebor and taken him to Mordor for better protection shorter term, so that they could build their plans together and avoid him ever being attacked. If they had teamed up, I truly think it could have meant awful things for the people of the West. So perhaps, just perhaps, Bard's achievement is one of the most underrated moments in all of Middle-earth's histories. But that may just be me thinking that. With that now though, it is time for my question of the day, which is, do you think they would ever actually team up? Would they have made a deadly alliance or would their egos have just been too much to get on side? Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section below, as well as if you'd like to see the full what if in the future too. And now to shout out our patrons, you guys are amazing in supporting our short film project and we are making great progress cannot thank you all enough. We have the Divine Power tier members of Kevin and Abram, the Fire Demon tier members of Nasheed and Gregory, and the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, Jennifer, Hunter, and David too. You are all true legends of the Bro Hero. Finally, if you have managed to reach the end of this video with me today and you are enjoying what you see on the channel, then please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon too so that you can get all notifications ticked so you know when all future videos go up. And so, thank you for spending just some of your time with me today. I hope you are all having a great end of the year, holidays, hopefully just some time off to round off 2022. And I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.